Um, good evening, everybody. My uh, namaskaram to each one of you. It's been after a long time that I'm getting on the stage, so I think I'm a little nervous. So it might sound a little feeble now, but I'm sure I'll boom in your ears in a while. So all my 30 plus years of practice, I've uh, I've never looked at what a disease does to the body. I've always looked at how the person reacts to a disease. For instance, BP. You know, BP does the same damn thing to everybody. Of course, different degrees of affection. But I've always looked at how a person reacts when he's diagnosed with BP. That to me is individualization. I'll probably explain this in a little while too. So uh, coming to the geriatric uh, aspect of my talk today, I had a 75 year old patient who came to me with uh, knee pain, back pain, complaining that he's feeling very weak. So I assured him that I can do something for him. I never promised him that I can cure him, I can heal him. But I told him I can definitely help him. And after I assured him, I spoke to him and I said, Sir, we humans have created a car. We, we invented a car. Now this car which is invented is meant to serve us for a certain number of years. Let's say 30 years. The government says 15 years, let's say 30 years. But after some time, the car starts to give you trouble. And then you start repairing it, you start replacing parts. And then it runs for another five years. But after that, again, it starts to give you trouble. Whatever you do, it'll keep troubling you. Some sound will come in, this, it'll not start, something or the other will keep happening. What we humans have created has got a lifespan. Similarly, our creator who created us, we have a lifespan. It is not fair to expect our body to be absolutely fine all our lifetime. It is going to give us trouble at some point or the other. It's very important to accept that we are growing old, that we are going to have some kind of discomfort or the other in our lives. Now, when I speak to this to the patient, the patient starts to think about it. Yeah, you know what this guy is saying makes sense. I'm growing old. I will have some issues or the other. I don't have to go on repairing myself. Some kind of acceptance will come into him. Now, there was another patient who came to me with multiple issues. He used to take 15 tablets a day. All kind of issues, lung, heart, kidneys, everything. Very unhappy. Once again, when he came to me, I, I told him that, sir, don't worry about it. I'll tell you, I'll give you medications. I'll make you comfortable. And once he was settled, I asked him, sir, do you have any idea about what is the life expectancy of an Indian, an average life expectancy of an Indian? He said, no, I don't know. I said, it's 69 years. I said, you're 82. 80% 80 of the people die at the age of 69, you're lucky to be alive at the age of 82. When you go to bed and when you wake up in the morning, you're able to open your eyes and you're alive. Do you realize that lakhs of people who went into bed with you do not wake up? You're lucky to be alive at 82. Open your eyes, you're alive, smile. Thank you God that you're special. He's given you another day. So when you look at a perspective like this, you look at life in a different way. It is not important to stay alive. It is important to live your life. So when you say these kind of things, they, the patient kind of, you know, starts to begin to think because nobody has ever spoken to him that man, you're supposed to die at 70, you're still 82. How are you alive? Nobody tells him that. The family cannot tell him that. Nor can the friends, nor can anybody tell him that. But this is the reality. 80% of the people with you have died. You are 20%. You are alive, but you are still complaining. My back is paining. I am getting up to pass urine in the night. I am not remembering things. 
so what if you have to wake up two to three times in the night go back to sleep if you don't get sleep sleep in the daytime it's not that you're going to office every day at 82 it's a perspective uh, another patient came to me saying that uh, doctor i am now 80 plus and you know all my life i've had two pegs in the night now the doctor says don't drink because if you drink your health is going to get spoiled so i stopped drinking now i can't sleep i bark at everybody who come near me naturally because he has been drinking all his life and suddenly he stops his drinks he's bound to not to get to sleep so his doctor wrote him a sleeping tablet and then he also gave him an antidepressant now this reminds me of my father who was a homeopathic doctor himself pretty pretty famous he used to have his drinks every night and then at the end of his life he was diagnosed with cancer and he was better than and uh, while he was better than he used to every night you know call one of them and said get me a small i was a fresh doctor then out of medical college came home and i said no he cannot have a drink it's against medical this thing his health will get spoiled this poor man who was a tiger all his life was helplessly lying down in bed and every night he used to ask give me a couple of drinks but we never gave him none of the family members gave because i am the doctor when i said how can they give no he continued to live another four to six months and he died now the point i'm trying to make is what did i achieve by not giving him a couple of drinks in the night had i given him a couple of drinks he would have slept peacefully he would have not been so irritable did i prolong his life by not giving him anything i tortured him not intentionally but that's how we are now there are all of you are doctors so what i want to tell you is there is a disclaimer to what i'm saying i'm not saying anything out of a book all i'm saying is out of my experience some of you might agree some of you may not agree to it but as doctors there is a special power that is given to us we need to identify the special power the special power is normally when somebody talks to people they dissect everything that you talk now suppose i'm saying something you 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 try to dissect what i'm saying is he saying the right thing is he saying the wrong thing is it acceptable not acceptable and then if it seems okay for you then you absorb what i'm saying everywhere anybody you talk they you will always dissect what they're saying your intelligence is meant to do that but when a doctor speaks it is a command the most powerful person including modi if his doctor says modi ji you should not do this he will not question him yes or no that is the power that a doctor has got now you ask yourself are you using this power in your clinic to give a different perspective to the patient or are you just being a chemist i repeat are you using this power in your clinic or are you just following what has been taught to you in the medical college and are you just being a chemist a lot of patients they come with cancer terminal cancer fourth stage of cancer 75 year old 80 years old fourth stage of cancer it has gone into the lungs it has gone into the bones ducks up i want to take chemotherapy i want to take radiation i said for what you are 80 plus you have lived your life and you want to take chemotherapy and punish yourself you know what's going to happen today you come to my clinic walking you start chemotherapy i have to come to home and see you today you are able to pass urine on your own if you start chemotherapy you will have a catheter in your bloody bladder you decide what you want to do the point i am trying to make is the patient cannot make a choice the patient doesn't know what to do he listens to the doctor you go to an allopathic doctor you go to an oncologist he'll say you got a disease you need to get a radio you need to get a chemotherapy done get it done he doesn't know that there is another choice now this choice is something you and i need to give to this patient logic you are so old why do you want to stay alive and be in bed with tubes in your mouth in your nose do you want to just stay alive or you want to live your life this is a choice he knows but nobody speaks to him these kind of but as a doctor you have this special power to discuss these things with patient so you need to have the ability to make a choice for the patient same thing if a 40 year old guy comes 
you're not going to say the same thing to him you're going to say yes go do chemotherapy go radiation do whatever is there available to you and then you take care of yourself but you don't do that to somebody who is beyond 75 80 particularly those who come with no symptoms i had the other day one patient who was 85 87 years old completely metastasized cancer sir do you have any problem no i'm very happy i had i had a beautiful life i lived my life some actors vinod kanna i produce movies and i have a beautiful life and all that so why do you want no 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 cancer is there everywhere might as well take chemotherapy i told him you start chemotherapy you won't be able to function the way you are going to now these are the decisions that we need to help the patient make this is what makes you a better doctor a different doctor now once again jumping back to the geriatric part of it i've seen a lot of elderly people make you know at the end of at the end of when you are 80 plus you have a lot of money in the bank or you have a lot of property in the bank which you want to give it off to others so most of them they write a will saying that i want to give this property to my to a charity after i die or i want to give this particular building to my son after i die now my question is why after you die now the hard earned money that you made why don't you do charity while you are alive and see the joy of giving who knows what your money is going to happen after you die do you know that you're seeing from there what is being done with your money no while you're alive give it see the joy see the joy on people's faces see it transform somebody and then you also write a will you give it to your children see them enjoy the property that you're giving rather than after you go they fight over it give it to them while you're alive keep yourself make yourself secure that's very important make sure that children don't throw you out of the house stuff one last thing i'd like to say all the, the people who are uh, geriatric or you can actually convey this to a lot of your patients is that once they are down say cross a particular age it makes to you know write down something you put it in a piece of paper what you want to do suppose tomorrow you are brain dead you don't have the ability to think what do you want to do suppose you are diagnosed with a terminal a terminal disease what do you want to do if you have to be in the hospital Uh, on ventilator what do you want to do why don't you write it down rather than ask your child to take a decision for you you know if your child or family is going to take a decision for you and something happens to you they will have to live their entire life in that guilt now this is about you about your life you have the choice to make your decision you write it down how does it matter write it on a piece of paper type it down this is what i want to be if i am in this state don't let the family decide for you you should decide for yourself you should know how to live your life you should know how to die so with that thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity